Hello, thanks for joining us. In this video, we will be looking at the changes to the UK spec and what exactly these changes would mean for applicants. So the UK spec is currently at its fourth edition. And this edition was published by the EC in August 2020. It's expected to be implemented by December 2021. And basically the UK spec specifies the competence and the commitment required for CENG, ING or ENG tech registration. It also provides examples of activities that demonstrate the required competence and commitment. So how exactly do the changes affect the applicant? So if you plan to apply before 31st December 2021, you're required to check with your professional body as to whether or not you should refer to the fourth edition. So for instance, as of 30th September 2021, all applicants um, that plan to become chartered with the IET um, will be assessed according to the, fir the, the fourth edition. So it's important that um, you check with your professional body to see if it's okay to use the third one or if you're expected to take into account the fourth one. Um, so the thing to note is that applicants that um, apply for, for professional registration will not um, be disadvantaged um, during this um, transition. And um, so evidence that have been gathered using the third edition of the UK spec will remain valid. So that's good news for applicants. And so what that means is that there will be no need to rewrite evidence against the UK spec fourth edition. So if you plan to apply um, before the end of 2021. Now, what are the main differences between the fourth and third edition? So the good news is um, in terms of the content of your report, nothing would change as such. I think what this new edition does it is that um, you know from um, the feelings that um, we have had from applicants some of the applicants that um, we've helped to become chartered so in the past some of them did feel that um, they, they felt that the wordings were a bit um, um, difficult to understand uh, so for instance um, if you look at the preamble The previous edition talked about um, the chartered engineers being able to demonstrate theoretical knowledge to solve problems in new technologies. Now, what happens when you're not working with a new technology? So you could be working with an established technology. So I think that's um, one clarification that has basically made them, some applicants feel a lot um, a lot uh, more comfortable. So that's one thing to note. So nothing really changes per se in terms of the requirements. The only thing that has changed in this area is um, I would say it has made things clearer. Uh, with regards to the actual competence, so the A1 and the A2 competencies. So the first one is about maintaining and extending a sound theoretical knowledge. Well, at least that's what the third edition said. Um, for the fourth edition, I think it, things have become simpler. So what it says is that um, the candidate is expected to have maintained and extended a sound theoretical approach to enable them develop their particular role. So their particular role, uh, it may or may not be a new and advancing technology. Um, if you look at A2, it tells you exactly what the candidate is expected to, to be able to do. So which is that the candidate should be able to um, develop technological solutions 
to unusual or challenging problems. So that's the key word. So it doesn't matter what technology it is, um, what the candidate or the applicant is expected to demonstrate is his or her ability to understand and deal with complex technical issues or situation, um, situations with significant levels of risk. So that's very simple. For the B competence, um, so it's pretty straightforward. Nothing much has changed per se. Things have become clearer. So that's what's happened. So from the B1, the applicant is expected to demonstrate that he or she um, had an active role in the identification and definition of project requirements. So this is anything from specification, um, definition of need, and the like. So an example would be that um, the candidate was um, responsible for producing the specification requirement for that particular engineering task. So for the B2, it's about um, the ability of the applicant to carry out um, research and investigation um, necessary to undertake the design and development um, required to complete the engineering task. That's pretty straightforward. And for the B3, um, the applicant is expected to demonstrate that he or she has um, evaluated the effectiveness of that design. That's the B competence in a nutshell. For the C competence, it's all about project management. Um, so the ability of the applicant to plan and manage um, projects, um, the ability of the candidate to track the project during its life cycle, um, his or her ability to stick to the schedule and um, request for additional resource if necessary. So things of that sort. Um, the ability of the applicants to show technical leadership is also very key. Um, his or her ability to manage um, people within um, a project team is also expected of the applicant. And then um, the final one, C4, is about um, anything having to do with continuous improvement and promotion of best practices. For the D competence, nothing much has changed. Um, so from your report, you will be assessed anyway. So the quality of your, your, your written English will be tested. And during the interview, obviously, your, your spoken English will be tested. So nothing much has changed, if you like, in terms of the D competences. So um, can, the, can, can the applicant produce reports clearly? And then um, the applicant is expected to demonstrate personal and social skills. Pretty straightforward. So for the e-competence, um, the understanding of the relevant codes of conduct. So for the company he or she works with and then um, his professional body and uh, the engineering council as a whole. Um, safety. So this is another very key area. Um, has the applicant demonstrated that he or she can incorporate um, safety into the design of a system? And um, does he or she encourage um, safe practices at work? So examples of that will need to be demonstrated. Sustainability is something which is um, very, very vital. So the applicant is expected to show examples of um, sustainability um, incorporated during the life cycle of the project. And ethics, so very, very important um, ethics. So this is it in a nutshell. Um, applicants should not worry too much because everything is pretty, pretty straightforward. Things have become clearer and I think a lot easier.
so everyone can breathe easy, nothing um, significant has changed. Now, if you require help, as usual, um, please um, contact us and uh, let's discuss and see how we can help you um, fulfill your dream of becoming chartered. So I wish you all the best, as always, and um, see you again. Bye-bye.